and the train now standing is standing thank goodness i remembered to press the little mute button before we went good evening everybody uh to a very very smiley me and a very very smiley sav are you smiling sav i'm smiling uh, i should do the date thing it's wednesday the 9th of october the day after vapors won a miraculous victory in the european parliament it is the second of the first in the year of our vape zero one that's what it is isn't it mm -hmm. this is the first day of the rest of your lives it's yep. fabulous fabulous absolutely fabulous we're dead pleased um so tonight we've got to run through all kinds of stuff tell you what it all means we've got to look at what next and what the votes meant who voted for what and what that means going to be talking about people power we want to take a load of questions from the floor everything you're not sure about we're going to try and handle we want to cover um the mhra announcement and also talk a little bit about the knees meet on the 9th of november it is the 9th of november knees meet 9th of november <coughs> yes sensible law will be good won't it yeah yes Shall we? I'll do, I'll, I'll do the introductions. My name's Dave Dawn, or David yes. Dawn if I've got my Sunday name on. And in the big monitor tonight, we have the effervescent loveliness, the bountilicious babe that is the one and only Sav. Sav, how's your heed after last night? My heed is absolutely fine. Not Swiss cheese? No, it was Swiss cheese days ago. It's gone way past that. Indeed so indeed so um we'll take the titles the proper ones and when we get back we'll get a start on this because there's so much to cover and so much left yet to do this is he said finding the right thing to click vt talk <laughs> are live as a very live thing if you did not know you will by now know that um, yesterday the European Parliament voted by a margin of 68 votes I believe it was although my maths has gone right out of the window not to make e-cigs medicines uh, amendment 170 that was tabled by the Aldi group the EPP group and ECR which made up a majority of the European Parliament was successful in the two-part amendment. Flavours, however, were kept in by a much narrower margin, a margin of 18 votes. Um, but either way, it was successful. At the end of the whole thing, Ms McCavan, the rapporteur for the peace, sought the mandate of the parliament to go and negotiate with the council and received the mandate so to do. That's all the good news. The bad news is, is that there are rumours floating around that she will accede to requests for medicinal regulation from the council, which means we do have work to do. But I want to run through, before we get there, what 170 means in terms of us as vapors and vendors as well. And there's a whole host of other stuff. And I know, Sav, you've already got some comments lined up and questions lined up, haven't you? I've got a couple, yes. Well, let's, shall we hit them first and then we can kind of go that way? Yeah, there was a comment that Leanna Lawless made in chat earlier on. And she says, a Twitter question has been asked about who's paying for the pro e tweets. Yeah. Um, this is Martin McKee, um, who we took the mickey out of a little bit last week. Uh, in conjunction with two or three other Twitter accounts, and they are very, very suspicious about the number of people who seem to be very, very much in favour 
of electronic cigarettes and the non-medicinalization thereof. Um, and they are launching, apparently, a project to try and get to the bottom of it. And I'm going to say this, I welcome them doing that because everybody knows that there is no payment being made in any way, shape or form for any advocacy or any tweetering or any twi tweetering. Why did I say tweetering? Um, we know we're real people, but it does actually inform some of what we're going to cover a little bit later on. Um, if any of you are on, and I know a lot of you will be, on Chris Davis' mailing list um, and had responded to his request for information, you will have received an email in which Chris said that one of the major reasons that we were successful as a community yesterday in the European Parliament was purely and simply because we had managed to prove ourselves to be real people. A lot of groups when they're campaigning about what, whatever it happens to be, whether it's in, in local government, whether it's in uh, national parliaments or whether it's in the European Parliament, they'll do what so many of them do do, which is to put a form letter on a website and ask people to copy and paste or just sign like a petition. We didn't. We all went as individuals one at a time to see MEPs, to email our MEPs. That was the way we did it from the start. And that's how our MEPs know that we're each individual people. And if everybody done what I did and put the picture in or went to the surgeries or any of that kind of thing, they know that you are a real person doing all of this. And that's something that we need to bear in mind for what's coming next. Um, because there's a lot more work yet to do. And as Chris so rightly put it in his letter, the reason we were successful was because A, there were so many of us, B, it was obvious we were individuals, and C, the message was strong because it was all individual stories. That's what was going out. And that's why I'm so proud to be part of this because it is just a massive number of individual people speaking from the heart. And that's what really makes me proud and, and, and pleased as punch. Sav? Yes. Have we got more? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was just copy pasting, sorry. Um, Lamentless said regarding what we were just talking about, they will soon realise that the reason for so many tweets is our passion and how scared we all are about going back onto normal cigarettes and shortening our lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, Vincent Brindle has said, truth is, the modern society in this modern society, news gets around very fast with Twitter. We are all genuine people. Twitter is a very powerful tool and we use it. Well, absolutely right. And, and Jerry Stimson and I did a, um, a reply to, to Martin McKee in the British Medical Journal. If you haven't seen it, go and have a look. And I'm, I'll put my hands up straight away and say that Jerry is the lead author. He knows what he's doing. And as you might have gathered last night, I think I probably need to uh, probably need to apologise to an awful lot of people. I might have been a little bit tiddly last night. I was just a touch excited. And if I used inappropriate language at any point, I do apologise. It's, I was going to say it's not me, but we all know it is. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we were having a, a bit of a party and it was a bit good. I think the majority of people realised last night was a combination of all that stress and tension. We all needed a let off steam. That included the people in chat and it most definitely included us lot. <laughs> Yes, yes, I think I think that's 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 fair to say. Um, but yes, as I say, um, Jerry's the lead author on that one. He 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 can he can word things better than me. Um, I, I talk until the cows come home. But when it comes to sitting down and writing stuff, I tend to my fingers fall over each other. We talk together. He writes it down, and then and that was great. And the bottom line on it is a lot of the anti types do not understand social media at all. They cannot understand what a retweet does. They've got no idea what a quote does and even less understanding that even though they may have blocked you and uh, hands up in chat, everybody that's been blocked by Simon Chapman. <laughs> yes, that's a lot of us. 
um, it's not an exclusive club anymore. I thought it was just me at one point in time, but apparently it's, there's, there's millions of us. <laughs> Look at all the hands going up. There's an awful lot of hands going up, Richard. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, the, the, the fact of the matter is they don't understand Twitter. They don't understand Facebook. They don't understand the social media as they are. They don't get that if somebody who follows them retweets a ludicrous statement, they can get piled on because people want to have their say. And don't stop doing it. Whatever you do, don't stop doing it. Um, I'm going to try and get Martin McKay on the show. I think I want to get him on here and, and expose him to our chat, expose him to what goes on, expose him to the fact that this is a community that just happens to have some divas. I think somebody called me that earlier on. Mm -hmm. Not wrong. Although Karen's the bigger diva than me. Um, and yeah, we don't mind sitting in front of a camera and being seen and we'll spout off about anything. I mean, I'm a major whore. Karen's a major whore. And, you know, that's that's just the way it goes. It, it, it kind of brings everybody together and that's cool. That's great. Uh, that's, that's, that's brilliant. Oh, dear. Yeah, I'm going to turn chat off. <laughs> Probably wise. Um, is there anything that you can pick out of that lot that we might need to read out? <laughs> um, I've got a couple of comments that I've got. Um, Okashima said, people should not be afraid of their governments. Governments should be afraid of their people. Uh, Mark Shaw said, public health do not understand actually engaging with the public, period. Mm. Exactly right. And, and there are comments about Stan Glance as well, because Stan is doing exactly the same sort of thing. I'm sure you'll be picking those up. Um, so let's let's kind of get away from that little lot and understand that we've we've got to make people like McKee understand how um, the social media work. And that that's a large part of what we are doing now as vapors is educating, and we need to be educating everybody. But I know there were a few questions raised during the course of yesterday about Amendment 170 and what it actually means uh, for vapours in, in general. And let's kind of run through where that is and run through what the process is. As of now, as of the moment, e-cigs are protected. No matter what anybody says, as of the moment, they are protected because Parliament, the European Parliament, has exercised its will. However, what occurs now is that the council gets involved. They've already been involved. They have a, an agreed stance, if you like, and that agreed stance actually includes the medicinalisation of e-cigs along the lines of what the Commission proposed, but with lower levels, as in one milligram and two milligrams, basically. What will happen is Ms McAvan, McAvan, the rapporteur, has sought a mandate from Parliament to go and negotiate with Council because the Parliament on one side and Council on the other have to agree. They've got to come together and come to an agreement which then goes back to Parliament for Parliament to ratify and when that's ratified that then becomes law. It's adopted. That then is squirted out to all of the various different governments and the governments sit and look at it and go right we've got to do pretty much what it says here. Places like Spain and France will just go, ah, bugger it. A lot of the other countries will just go, ah, bugger it. Britain will take one look at it and go, hmm, we'll do that and we'll go a little bit further. Article 24 allows us to. Um, so what we'll do is blah, blah, blah. And what, they'll, they, what, what they do is known as gold plating. Taking what has been written down and making it a little bit firmer. They, that's what they're like. That's the way they go. So what we've got to do now, as a group, is to talk to our MPs. And this is why what happened yesterday is so vitally important and why I'm so excited by it all, because it's proved that we, as a community, can make a difference. I was speaking with Jerry Stimson earlier on during the course of today, after I'd got rid of the hangover and sobered up a little bit. And he was saying, it's nothing short of a miracle. It's actually what we achieved yesterday is something that needs to go down in the history books because it's never happened before. Never has the European public 
had its voice heard in such a decisive way. And when you think about it, that makes such a lot of sense. It's only relatively recently in, in terms of democracy that the likes of Twitter and Facebook and everything else has come along. And it's only very relatively recently, really, that we've learned how to use it in such an effective manner. And when you consider that, you know, the Eurocrats and Euro MPs use Twitter a lot, MPs use Twitter a lot, and they've been absolutely snored, they've been emailed, this is all you. Everything you've done, everything that you've done as individuals and that we've done collectively as a group has made a difference in the European Parliament. Given that that's the case, we can do exactly the same sort of thing again and we need to be going to see our MPs. What we also need to do is to decide what we like and what we don't like about Amendment 170. And that's kind of where I want to be going next in this little wander around what's going on and I'm, I'm going to be going straight back to Sav an awful lot because I know chat will be posting comments and questions that I want to build on so Sav? Yeah I've got a couple of things I mean one comment that I've just seen um, which says we've got 28 countries that's 28 battles mm -hmm. but Amon has said all the governments are correct that's true but there are some Zorro like people who believe that they're there to work for the people we have to find them and we have to get them on our side. Yes Yes, it's, it's, it's a heart and mind thing. It really is a heart and mind thing. Um, I, I Generally on a show night, I start my prep around about seven o'clock, making sure that all of the tech's working, because seriously, you don't want to know how many wires there are on the floor here. Um, and I'm hoping to get everything fixed together so that I don't have to move anything sh soon enough. But I start about seven, so I, I missed the one show tonight. Not that I would ever normally watch it, but Sav, we we got a a tweet about um, a vote what was going on oh the vote that was um, the one show thing yes right now see if I can find what Kat said about that hang on I've got a million screens here um, um, it's on this thing somewhere right yes I caught the one show she says there was a, a vote about using e-cigs in public places and that went 57% against the use of e-cigs in public places right. um, she says the guests didn't particularly have a lot of clue about it and one of the presenters said they actually felt uncomfortable about the whole e-cigs in general um, but I mean 57% against is not that bad considering the last time they had them on the one shot was like, oh my God, this is the work of the devil. Yes. From from what I can gather, um, the one show has been, well, the last time they looked at e-cigs, they were pretty much down on them to the point that I made an official complaint about it all uh, because I thought it was it was just wrong, wrongly treating e-cigs altogether. And this apparently is a little bit better. And I'm, I've just seen going scrolling past in chat that it ended up 50-50. Right. Now, the thing about it is, think back six months, we wouldn't have got 50-50. It just wouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. Again, we are winning the hearts and minds of people out there as people come to understand what e-cigs are. In fact, the coverage that we've had from the Beeb over the last two or three days, I think I'm safe in saying it's been more on our side than on the other. I would totally have to agree with that. Um, the BBC stuff has been very balanced, but it's it's shown, because it's been balanced, it's shown e in a positive light because they were being honest. Mm. Absolutely. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure there'll be comments coming up in chat that will back that up. I mean, even the, uh, the piece yesterday when Jerry Stimson and Martin Dockrell spoke on Radio Newcastle before Daz and I got the chance to, and even then, Martin Dockwell was very, very supportive of e-cigs. Still wants medicinal regulation, but very, very supportive of e-cigs. Um, is there anything coming in chat to that effect? Um, we've got quite a lot of stuff coming in from chat. Uh, again, they're green again that the, the BBC coverage was very balanced and just about the sheer level of the coverage. Um, there was apparently something on BBC Scotland this morning again that was very, very balanced. But the things that people are bringing up that they're concerned about, uh, well, I'll read this comment from Vapor Saint first, who says, some folks here ruin it by being 
overly blatant when they're vaping in public, like in stores and shops and things like that. They treat it like anything else and they do it to be considerate to other people rather than sort of being an extrovert about it. All right, yeah. I, I've got to admit, I, I don't hide what I'm doing at all. I will, though, say that the kind of plumage being the cloudage that you see being blown around in the studio would not normally be me when I'm out and about unless I'm at a, a vape meet, like the knees meet, which is happening on the 9th of November at the New Crown in South Shields. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be good. So well, I'll get the bloody taxi this time. <laughs> me not. Um, I, here's, I mean, there, there are all kinds of things that we need to be doing, and I'm going to be kind of dropping in and out of them all the way through. As you can imagine, there's so much information happened over the last couple of days and weeks that both Sav's brain and mine are a little bit Swiss cheesed and kind of disjointed and trying to pull everything together, and it's it's not easy. Um, right, well, I've got one, well, two questions go on before then. we move on. Yeah, yeah. Lamental has said, for us that have Labour MPs, and given that not a single Labour MEP voted for Article 170 yesterday, is it inconceivable that our MPs will take a different stance to that of McAvan? It's, now that, that, that's actually a funny one, because my own MP is Labour, and she's supportive of ACs. I don't know about medicinalisation, I'm going to be going to see her. Jack Straw is Labour and he appears to be 100% against medicinalisation of e-cigs. And I'm absolutely certain that on a personal level, Labour MPs, some, I'm not going to say all, but some will certainly take the view that they shouldn't be medicines. When it comes down to Conservative MPs, we saw yesterday that Strew and Stevenson, a Scottish MEP in the ECR group, a Conservative, Scottish Conservative, voted against 170 and 471 that's against what we got and for medicinalization so there's gonna be a split on both sides and it's why i keep saying that we need to be able to educate so that they actually get to understand what an ECG is and what it means to us that's why the individual stories are so important with it being mps we're now much in, in a much better position to be able to go and visit them at their surgeries and I would beg you so to do it's very easy you ring their local office up find out when their surgery is and where it is you make an appointment and you're given a slot and it's dead simple you walk in and the first question that you need to ask is can I ask you what your stance on electronic cigarettes is open completely open question if they don't know what they are and they know nothing about them they'll probably tell you if they're towing the party line you can expect the same crap that we've heard from so many of the labor meps because they'll have the same piece of paper in front of them if they need to know more they'll also tell you and that gives you the in that you need to be able to say well this is what i use this is an electronic cigarette and as you can see it looks nothing like a John Player Special, a Benson Hedges, a Marlboro, other tobacco cigarettes are also available. And you can explain why you use one, how long you've used one and what it's meant for you and your family. And that is the most powerful story anybody can ever give. And no MEP, sorry, no MP worth their salt will dismiss that. That's my opinion and that's what that's what I've experienced whenever I've seen MPs about anything. They don't dismiss it. They might not act on one, but if there are 2,000 vapors in, in their constituency and 150 of them go and see them all saying the same thing, they're bound to get a message. Sav, I see your eyes are wobbling again. <laughs> Is chat busy? Chat is very busy and Skype's busy and everything's busy. Um, right, two things. Blaze brought up earlier on that he doesn't like the 30 milligram per milliliter thing. And also Swifty McTavish has said, I'm sorry if I missed it, but when will the next lot of stuff be happening? Because the longer it takes, the more people will start to vape and it will be more harder for them to push anything through. Indeed, let's, let's cover both of them before we go up the adverts. The 30 milligram thing, I use 36 and 45. 
I have to say it's a starting point. My feeling is that it would be possible to get a medical 45 out there if somebody felt the need to do it. From the point of view of home mixers, mm, it's an issue. I'll grant you it's an issue. Um, in terms of would I find it difficult to move to 30 milligram? Probably not. The average in the UK is 18 milligram. For France, it represents a step up because their limit is 20 at the minute. And Denmark, it actually legitimises ACs in Denmark because currently they're banned there uh, in terms of, of being medicines. And this, of course, would help them not to be banned. That said, there's still room for negotiation. And this is why we need to be talking to our MPs. So if you feel that 30 milligram is too low, for whatever reason, when you're talking to your MP, you need to say, yes, it's great that e-cigs have been protected, but 30 milligram, I feel, is a bit on the low side. I'd prefer 36, 54, 72, whatever it happens to be, up to the legal limit for getting juice as it currently stands in the UK. And that, of course, is something that needs to be happening in every one of the European countries. But everybody will have a different view and it's going to get averaged out. But if that, tell your MP because your MP has got to, if you ask them, forward that on to the Minister for Health. And we have a new Minister for Health who, yes, we're going to be trying to get to. Um, Clive Bates, I'm sure, will be, getting, uh, will be trying to get to see her, as will a whole host of other people. So, yes, that's the 30 milligram. What, what, what was the other one, Sav? I'm sorry. Um, the other one was, I'm sorry if I missed it, but when will the next lot of stuff regarding this be happening with the ministers? Because the longer they take, the more people will start to vape and it will become much harder for them. Oh, it, 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 it's happening now. It's happening now. We need to be taking action now. This is not something we can sit back and party for a fortnight with. We need to be taking action now. There will be MP surgeries on Friday. At, at various different places around the UK. And if that's your MP, you need to be there. The sooner we make a start on this, the better. It would be lovely if we could have a week or a fortnight off and then get back into the fray, but I'm afraid this is a bit like falling off the bike. Um, we've got to go straight at it. I, I, I'm contacting uh, my MP tomorrow with a whole dossier of stuff and because I know that I, her, um, her surgery doesn't happen tomorrow. I think it's, it's a week on Friday and I'm going to be down there and Keith will be with me and we're, we're going to sit in front of her and make sure that she knows everything that's going to happen. Um, do, do you think that covers it for the moment, Sav? Because we do need to take some adverts, I'm afraid. It does. The one thing I'm going to say before the adverts, because as we mentioned about the knees meet earlier on... Um, which is on the 9th of November. Which is on the 9th of November. Big Craig sent a message to Kat to ask us to say that there is a vape meet in Glasgow this Saturday. Finiston Bar, details on UK Vapors. Finiston Bar in Glasgow, details on UK Vapors. Go over there, get it large, enjoy it. That was not a Glasgow accent, was it? It was. It, it wasn't. Really we'll was. Take the adverts. I do. I'm going to be apologising for last night a lot, and I'm apologising for that one now. We'll be back in two minutes. Iveber and Iveber-Elixir.co.uk Iveber and Iveber-Elixir.co.uk Pro 
proud sponsors of VaporTrails.tv. And we're back in the room here on uh, Wednesday the 9th of October in the old scale. It's the second of the first O1 in the year of our vape. Uh, Sav, I know you've got tons of stuff coming in from chat. There is loads and loads of people talking about the 30 milligram limit. Um, I've got a question for, from Gillis. Well, first of all, I'll read out what Peter Beckett said, who says, for those talking about 30 milligram, there isn't a straight answer right now on mixing, stroke wholesale, etc. That would be an issue for UK government, not EU. Mm -hmm. And Gillis has said, was there anything in the amendment that limits or stops imported base liquid? No. There has been nothing to talk about a ban order that I have been able to see. Um, and again, I think that's a matter for national government rather than European government to decide what they will and won't allow through their borders that are not part of EU sales. So that if, if that 30 milligram finally ends up applying, that would be 30 milligram throughout the EU. But that doesn't mean that you couldn't bring in 75 milligram, say, from China or the US or Turkey or anywhere outside the EU. As far as I'm aware, there's not a ban order um, and there's not likely to be a ban order. I think we, we maybe need to read out what the MHRA has said, do we? Yeah, just Mark Shaw put a comment in. Also read the MHRA put out a statement saying they would hope manufacturers volunteer for an ME after yesterday's ruling. Indeed. Um, well, let's, let's, let's show that. I'll put that up on screen now. This is from the MHRA website from today. And it says, in, in December 2012, the European Commission published a proposal to revise the TPD, which aims to address a number of areas in relation to tobacco products, including nicotine-containing products such as electronic cigarettes. I think I've sobered up. <laughs> on 8th of October 2013, the European Parliament voted on the draft directive as a whole, and the Commission's proposal to regulate electronic cigarettes as medicines was not supported by a majority of MEPs. That's a lovely way of saying, we lost. <clears throat> a majority supported using a mixture of tobacco regulation e.g. controls on promotion, and medicine-style regulation, e.g. reporting of adverse reactions, for all nicotine products, including medicines, and applying medicines regulation to products that could be the same, that make medicinal claims. Now, in my mind, that is, it's actually obfuscation on purpose. It's pur purposefully obfuscated. What it means is that there is a two-tier system under the current proposal. That means if you decide that you want to market your e-cig as a medicine, you can and medicines regs will apply. And if you don't, you don't have to. You do it as a novel tobacco product. So let's go on to the next. The European Parliament vote is one stage in the legislative process, which is still not complete, and there will be further negotiation. The MHRA continues to believe that medicinal regulation of nicotine-containing products is the best way to deliver a benefit to public health. We will be continuing to encourage companies voluntarily to seek a licence for their products so that they can be seen to meet appropriate standards of safety, quality and efficacy and could be sold and supplied, including on prescription, according to the NICE public health guidance on reducing the harms of smoking. More information, blah, blah, blah. Now, I don't know where this stands legally but I'm going to tell you what my opinion is and I've got to say full disclosure I am not a lawyer I'm a fat lad I think that the MHRA in that paragraph the last paragraph encouraging companies to seek a license for their products when they have said that there is nothing currently on the market good enough is inveigling companies into submitting licensing applications on false pretenses because they've already said a they're not medicines and b whatever companies already have is not good enough to get a marketing authorization and yet there is no refund if your product doesn't gain an authorization i think that what they're doing is wrong sav yeah, I have to agree. I mean, there's a lot of people in chat that are questioning that. And our very own Daz has said, why would some opt for meds regs? He's confused. He doesn't understand why they would do that. Um, th th there's actually a very good reason why they would. And that's because they are presenting acquitted. 
and aid exactly like the the, uh, the patches and the gums and the stuff that's already out there what we used to call nrt but what they are now calling licensed nicotine containing products so the same thing same damn thing if you want to go into that market there's, there's nothing to stop you from doing that bat's doing that with the vork which by the way they've had their backside smacked off the mhra for allowing that information to come out but that's what bat's doing it's what mcneil's doing with a first generation e-cig although i have my doubts as to whether or not not that should get a marketing authorization the fizz from last night is still working <laughs> i do apologize for last night and that one um but yeah th there's nothing to stop people from doing that and there are there are people out there and you can't deny it there are people out there that would find it more reassuring to have something that the nanny state has approved because they want to be nannied and that's their choice if people want to do that, that's fine. But we shouldn't be forced down that road. And Amendment 170 doesn't force us down that road. What it does do, though, is to require that vendors and manufacturers, really, give the right information to the relevant authorities to say, look, this is what it does. This is how it works. This is what it says on the tin. We've done all the tests on it and everything's fine. There isn't a problem. And that's it. There's no argument. There's nobody going there saying, no, 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 go away and redo, go away and redo. They simply have to notify what's going out there. What that is going to mean is that certain juice makers will have to legitimise if this goes through as it stands. They will have to be able to show exactly what's what, what the emissions are and all the rest. And what form that documentation is going to take at the moment, we don't know. Some people will say that as a good thing. Some will see it as a bad thing, but that's about the situation as it stands. So the likes of um, EC Wizard UK, Liquid, and, and, and so on and so forth that have their own, and Peter Cole with DV, they have all of the GCMS testing stuff at hand, and they're doing this already. All of that information is there, so for all of their lines, they can just submit all the documentation and say this is what it is. With other companies, it's going to mean a little more work, but the playing field's level for everybody. And now, it, someone, can I just jump in there? Someone can. in chat is asking, how would this affect home mixing? I'm guessing they mean home mixing just for themselves, not for selling on to other people. We've we've got to we've got to draw a line between what you do for you and what you do for other people, and it's exactly the same, if you like, as what the uh, the Women's Institute and the Mothers Union have with Jam and Jerusalem, isn't it? Really, mm. um, so. Mrs. Mrs. Brown from Three Doors Down can make a, a pot, of, a, a big thing, pan of strawberry jam for her and her daughter and her husband and, and so on and so forth. That's fine. She can do it in her kitchen and it's, there isn't a problem. If, though, she makes it for the Mother's Union, of which she is a member, to sell to the public, then it has to be done in food hygiene standard premises. And exactly the same will apply to juice. It's going to have to be produced under controlled conditions, not in medicines quality places, but in, well, food standard hygiene would do the job, I think. Um, and at the risk of upsetting people, I kind of welcome that because we've said before on various different shows on VTTV, it just needs one bottle of juice to have a pube in it or a bogey hanging off the threads and trade and standards would be all over it, you know. It, Go on. It's like what Crossbow's just said in here. It's a bit like homebrew. You can brew what you like, but if you sell it, they'll nail you to the wall. Yep. Dems the rules. That's the mm. way it works. And and to be honest, you know, that's kind of fair. Um, because I've tasted some homebrew in me time, and honestly, you could launch rockets with it. <laughs> if you bought that as beer, um, you'd be flat on your back after a pint, much like I was last night, which, again, I apologise for. What else we got, Sav? Um, a comment that uh, old Git put in uh, regarding the MHRA says it just sounds like legalised mugging to him. He's but, not wrong. Yeah. Amon has said, I'm curious how they will handle the advertisement and packaging stuff. We should pack all egos in a package with warning text or is it just the liquids? Um, I think... If you if you were to right, hang on, let's 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 do this sensibly and separate it all off. There's there's me me one three four. Sorry, Lorian. There's one of my two one three fours. 
that's effectively a torch with a variable output so that's really not going to need a warning it's a torch with a variable output this is why medregs is so damn stupid because under medregs that would have to have ce certification it would have to go through tests there would have to be a limit on what it could do it just wouldn't get through but that that needs nothing with it, it i mean it should have instructions with it and indeed as a 134 it does and let's take that which i'm going to be looking at tomorrow night so i'm not going to go too close on it um it's a squip and again there's nothing medicinal about it again it should come in with instructions and all of that kind of stuff and it did, you know and, and it might but the final one is where's it gone i've moved it come here there you go there's a bottle of juice that needs instructions that needs its emissions and everything else on there that needs a full set of ingredients it, we need that information you know we kind of should already have it really so it's not looking for anything more than we should already have it's it's it, it's actually not a bad thing and this did come with a leaflet inside it with all of the warnings on there with all of the ingredients properly labeled up and that kind of thing and that that's not a bad thing i i, I do quite like that so yeah in terms of of uh, information it's merely giving everybody the information that you really should have on a product anyway full set of proper instructions and warnings against improper use and in terms of juice everything you need to know and hopefully really really accurate reporting of the nicotine content that's that's not a bad thing in my book sav yeah uh chat i totally agree with that moon it's just said instruction should be an absolute um Cerulean says, says uh, Lorian said instructions with starter kits would be brilliant. Peter Beckett says, at ah, Dave, yes, yes, yes. And Formigo has said, well, Dave, we also need it for such things as mesh, canthal, etc., as hexachromes are not good. And I finally managed to get me, me, me stuff working. I'm sorry, I was people have seen on camera I was batting away and just needed to reset the app. Um, yeah, all of all of that is right. I mean, there are it, it, some of what the antis have said is founded in truth you know some what they do is they inflate it they gold plate it they blow it up beyond all proportion just purely and simply to make it sound as though we need to have the far end of the fart and where it came from tested you know you need to know that that when you put your thumb on the button uh, it's going to do this that and the other and all this kind of stuff we don't what we need is the information that this is actually going to force everybody to give so it's it's not bad from that respect at all um what, what was the second one of that little lot uh about canthal and mesh and things um and we should we should have instructions for them because yeah. of the possible dangers well yeah i mean the bottom line on it is the vaping community worldwide has done an awful lot of testing there's been all sorts of stuff tried that got that got thrown out like the ceramic wicks for instance don't know anybody using them now because i couldn't make them work get too many dry hits we've got people in the states and now experimenting with sub ohm coils these um what are they calling the micro coils there's there's all kinds of different stuff that people experiment with and as as they come to fruition and everybody real actually this is good then it'll go into commercial production. That's exactly what happens all of the time. And that's not a bad thing. Under medicinal regulation, that would never happen. It just wouldn't. You would have an underground subculture of people trying all this stuff out and there'd be no protection at all. This gives us what I like to think of as being sensible protection, as in it makes the makers tell us what's there then we can make our own choices which seems to me to be the fairest way to go and i'm going to need to take the second set of ads when we come back i'm sure there's going to be loads more questions i hope everybody's finding this helpful it's certainly making me get my thoughts in order back in two minutes
and we are back in the room he said pressing buttons all over the place um while i was out getting another little glass of coke diet coke i'm practicing risk reduction <gasps> pardon me but not belching reduction <laughs> i'm so sorry from since last night my tracheal tract has just been pumping gas out at such a rate of knots that's what happens when you celebrate but we all richly everybody every last one of us richly deserved the opportunity to get wazzed last night and i took every opportunity so have you had loads of stuff i do yes the first thing i'm going to read is actually a comment that i got from leviathan and your burping made me remember that i had it okay um this is <laughs> why <laughs> You'll understand when I get it. Okay. It says, Dave, you don't need to keep apologising, mate. The people that forced us down this road are the people that should apologise. Not you, not anyone from last night's VTTV. You were all entitled to let off steam last night, all of you. And to me, that includes everyone in chat once again. Yes, I would agree um, and thank you for that. Yes, but now I'm going to go to a comment that John Diver has put in. He said, the MHRA position seems fine to me. Buy a license and you have a premium product and you can charge accordingly. Mm hmm. Sav, you froze. Oh no. Sav has frozen. Just a second. Let's see if we can get her back. Are you there? I'll drop it out and go back in. It's all running. Oh, this is sorry. It's murder when this happens. Right, it looks as though Sav's, uh, Sav's bit's gone, so I'm going to try and handle chat. Oh! What's on here? What? Ah, bollocks! Yes, um, are we back up, we're back live, thank you. For whatever reason, yes, um, <laughs> internet went down. I'm trying to get Sav back now. Stick with me, we will make this work. Hello. Hello, Sav. Hello. Yes, that was the noble art of uh, BT deciding that it would completely reset the whole of the circuit. Nice. Yes, it would have been oh. nice if they told me it was going to happen. I do apologise for that, everybody. It's been a night for that, hasn't it? Um, uh, I was uh, talking away to myself thinking, he's been awful quiet. Yes. Um, shall we pick up where we left off? Yes, I'll start again with what John Diver said. Oh yes, that's the, that's the place. <laughs> right. John said, the MHRA's position seems fine to me. Buy a licence and you have a premium product and can charge accordingly. Mm -hmm. The rest of us can carry on with our products, which will probably be the same anyway. I don't see a problem with it. 
To which Crossbow responded, John, that isn't my interpretation of what they have said. Right. Um, let's, let's look at what they've said. At the moment, the MHRA is moving down the road expecting that the British government will back medicinalisation of e-cigs in council and that's what they're going to negotiate for. This is why we've got to be on the ball and talking to MPs to, to make sure as far as we can that that doesn't happen. And that's the same in all of the European countries. We need our elected representatives in member states to go along with what parliament's decided. Or might you know we might be able to persuade them to move the, the 30 up we might be able to per, per, uh, persuade them to do other things as well but we need to make our voices heard as we said earlier on we've won our battle the war carries on and indeed it intensifies now because they're aware we've got them on the run that's the thing they know we can do it and they know we're going to try to do it so that's what we've got to do but the Amendment 170, as it stands, allows a two-tier system. Something that's presented as a medicine on the one hand and something that's presented as a consumer product on the other hand. The two can coexist. So John's interpretation is right. The MHRA, however, doesn't want to see that happen. And we've got to press for Amendment 170 to hold. That's what we've got to do. What else have we got, Sav? Right, we've got a comment that came in from Moonlit and he said, I think maybe the advertising restrictions are worth mentioning too. According to Article 170, e-cigs will be subject to tobacco advert restrictions, which is potentially unhelpful. To which Formigo said, e-cigs don't need advertising. Real cigs don't have it and they're selling, still selling by the millions to new customers every year. And that's absolutely right. Um, that is absolutely right. Um, I took the time today to have a look at the growth curve as, as mapped out by Ash. Why not? They've done all the research, saves me having to do it. And they're not far wrong in their figures, I've got to be honest. Going back to 2009 when I got started, and I'm, I'm going to go to the other camera because I'm, I'm going to need nods and shakes and what have you from you, Sav, because you started before me. Mm. There couldn't have been more than four or 500 ACG users in the country when you first got started yeah i knew of gary dibley and scott bonner that was about it there was a handful so there was the gary dibley crossbow yeah and um sea biscuit was around roughly the same time not that not long after professor beard yeah prof beard but not many there wasn't many at all that was in no. 2009 we stand now at almost one and a half million could be over one and a half million for all i know and i don't know for absolute certain but that growth has happened pretty much with word of mouth that only this last six months if that mm -hmm. yeah that we've seen tv advertising and that hasn't exactly been all pervading and e-cigs have grown and grown and grown as topsy i mean it's been exponential growth my understanding is that internet advertising is a very different beast and they have no way of controlling that um, which means for instance for us because it would preclude us from broadcasting in the uk well the dot tv doesn't just mean tv it also means tuvalu so if our server is located in tuvalu we can do what the hell we like that's not in the eu um, as with all of these things, as everybody's discovering during the course of this show, there are ways and means round everything, actually, that they've done in the TPD. We were discussing last night, if they're going to ban menthol cigarettes, it's no problem at all to go and get some menthol crystals and make your Marley's Marley menthol. It's not difficult to do. Mm. Um, all of these kinds of things we can get round. And trust me, vapertrails.tv will be showing you how and telling you how and we will do what chris davis said he would encourage which is if we've got to bend the law in order to allow people to do what they want to do then fine because that's going to save lives 
that's my stance on it i'm telling you now they'll stop me broadcasting when they physically come and chop me head off to stop us talking and i, and I think i'm speaking for the rest of the team as well aren't i Totally. I mean, Kat's already been looking at buying a boat and taking it offshore if we have to, because we will do what we have to do. Absolutely right. And and we'll, we'll tell you and show you how to do what you need to do in order to be able to do what you want to do, because I will not let the bastards grind us down, and neither should you. Um, what else have we got from Chatsov? I just have to read what Mark Shaw says. He says, you'll have to opt in to watch when the government bring in the age restrictions on the internet. If you would like to access porn, go and VTTV, click here. <laughs> <laughs> the, there might even be porn and go on VTTV. If they're going to make us go offshore, why not? We'll do the lot. I already know some girls that will take their clothes off at the drop of a hat. <laughs> And you know it's not Sav. <laughs> I was going to say, don't look at me. Karen, takes, but not Sav. <laughs> takes one the drop of a hat. <laughs> How much? I'll discuss it after the show. Okay, that's fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see Gary Dibley's just said, oh, go on then. <laughs> <laughs> we know Gary. We've got to stop Gary from doing that. Yes, I mean, he doesn't even take a drop of a hat for Gary. No, 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 it's every bloody show. You just don't get to see it. I know. So look, um, we, I'm going to take an extra five minutes for the internet going down and the, the route of being reset. Um, yeah, where were we? Um, ba -do, 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 do do Right, I've got one thing that I can bring up that Diana Lawless uh, mentioned earlier that was something that was on Prime Minister's question time. Yes, I heard that. Go on. Um, and it was Jake Berry, Conservative MP, asked, does the Prime Minister believe that when the European Union forces my constituents to buy 20 cigarettes at a time rather than their current 10, it will reduce the number they smoke? To which the Prime Minister supposedly answered, it does not, on the face of it, sound a very sensible approach. I was not aware of the specific issue, so let me have a look at it and get back to my honourable friend. That is indeed word for word what he said, because I went and got onto iPlayer before the show had finished so I could rewind and find it. And that's exactly what he said. And Dr Christian today tweeted that the whole notion of banning 10 packs is stupid because if you buy a 20 instead of two tens it's cheaper but the fact that david cameron is going to be taking a look at that means there's a chink in the armor the doorway is slightly open and we just need somebody with enough clout to get the foot in there and continue the negotiations now i know things are afoot to take it to david cameron I do know that for a certain fact. Things are afoot to take it to David Cameron. I can't tell you what because I don't understand the mechanisms. Like I've said before, I'm just a fat lad. I'm not a lobbyist. I'm definitely not being paid as a bloody lobbyist. I wish the hell I was. Um, but yeah, we, we know, we know beyond all doubt we've got to put the pedal to the metal. We've got to be talking to MPs. We've got to get to them somehow. We've got to be emailing them. We've got to be tweeting them. We've got to be doing what we've already done again with a different set of... <laughs> what the... <laughs> what is that? I don't know. Sounds like you've got a scream man in there. I have no idea what that is. and I don't know how to stop it. I think it's somebody Skyping me. No, it can't be. Oh, hell. It's not a mobile phone. No. That's a, wi that's a Windows 8 machine, and I've got no idea what it was. <laughs> I haven't got a bloody clue. Oh. I, 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 just to explain to everybody, I got hold of a Windows 8 machine because I needed something that was going to take the European Parliament broadcasts and allow me to play it out. Yesterday was too important not to do it, so I went and got one. I don't understand it, I don't bloody like it, and it's just done something that I don't understand. <laughs> I have no clue. Sav, help! Don't ask me, I'll stick with Windows 7. <laughs> oh, God. Right, I've got one last comment from chat, and it's from Suki. 
And Sooty says, as things stand at present times, all sides have won a little and lost a little, mostly in all areas saved face. So when it goes to the ministers, are they going to think, this has been a right bugger's muddle, their words, not mine, so we won't rock the boat anymore and let it go through near enough as is. They know if they mess about what will happen. We've proved that to date, and mm. this time it will be right on their doorstep. Do you know something? That's exactly right. We, I, I, you, prior to that bottle of wine getting right down my neck last night, I think I said this, and I'm going to say it, and I'll keep on saying it until I'm blue in the face. I am so proud to be part of this community of vapors because you've shown we've got power. And people like Martin McKee and lots of others don't understand that it's us, we as people, who have come together with a common interest to fight this opposition that we see, to fight this being lent on and stood on and stamped on and being told that we're not worthy. We've got a voice together and we need to use it. We have the ability. We've shown that. We know we can do it. We've just got to get together and keep on doing it until proper democracy rules, until we show that the people have the power, not the politicians. They are there to do what we want them to do. That's why we put them there. And as a community, we're going to bloody well show them that's what we're going to do. You have the power. You need to use it and we'll get where we ought to be. And trust me, VaporTrails.tv will be here backing you to the hilt. If we can give you tools, if we can show you how to do it, we'll do it. Am I right or am I wrong, Sav? Oh, you're 100% right. We are not going anywhere. So, there you go. Um, that's the way it stands. That's the way it has to be. I'm going to pull this to a close now in case anything else goes wrong tonight. And, and yes, I will be in touch with one or two people to find out how to make this thing work the way it goes. But you know what we need to do. You know what you need to do. You know where we stand. I'm going to end this the way I always end it. Has chat had the last word or is there anything light we can say? All chat I've got to say is solidarity. There you go. Solidarity. Vape on. Vape hard. Thanks for tonight, Sav. And thanks for everything you've done. <laughs> it's been fun as always. As always. Vape on. Vape hard. Don't let the bastards grind you down and go and talk to your MAP. From all of us here, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll, I'll see you tomorrow night with Keith and a surprise guest maybe in video. But until then, from all of us here, have a great night and we'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye bye.